Nobody's heard from me for months. I'm doing better than I ever was. Hey sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Calls Campers. If you're new here, I am a first grade teacher in Las Vegas. I think it's been like six months since I've talked to a vlog camera. Actually, I'm not even on my vlog camera. I'm on my phone. I did bring my vlog camera, but I can't find my SD card. So we don't get the nice, fancy focus, sound, blurred background. You get my phone, um, which is really throwing it back to first year teacher vlog, Maylene. Um, but I didn't want to use not having an SD card and getting to use my camera as an excuse not to vlog today because I already told myself I just I just need to do it. So today is Wednesday, March 27th. A lot has happened since my last video. I actually had a couple of unedited videos from, gosh, I want to say like November that I was going to post. But at this point, like even some of them were half edited. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to let those rest and just move on. I am getting observed today during my reading block. We're doing nonfiction text features. We're writing a nonfiction chapter book and I have so much that I want to share with you but I do have to get ready for my observation. I just have to prep a couple of materials so we are going to do that and yeah I missed you. I just wanted to let you guys know that I am doing really well. I haven't been on YouTube because it takes so much time. It takes time to sit here in the morning. It takes time to sit here in the afternoon and kind of recap my day and explain things, which I love doing, but it just takes more time. And then it takes me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to edit my footage. So I'm going to be really intentional with the footage that I'm getting today. We're just doing a day in my life, not like a weekly vlog, as you can tell from the title. And yeah, I'm just kind of dipping my toes back into vlogging. Instagram has just been so easy. It's so fun for me to edit the little reels and they can give you like a glimpse into things, but I feel like YouTube videos are better for actually learning about like the craft of teaching, I guess. At the end of the day, that's my goal is I want my content to be helpful to people. So even if I can't commit to doing like weeks of vlogs anymore, I still want, I still want to be present in this space and I still want to share what I can with you guys. So yeah, let's get started day of my life <laughs> missed you you guys are used to seeing my reading block as a read aloud daily task activity um, and that's usually the case except for weeks where I am doing science so whenever I do some kind of science unit with my students I swap my reading and writing block really to incorporate science into it and kind of integrate it so Hopefully you can hear me on my phone okay. I'm not used to recording on my phone like this. I mean, all of my content that you see me teaching is recorded on my phone, but I don't know about extra noise as far as the vlogging goes. But the unit that we're doing right now is about butterflies and I'm incorporating that in writing. We are doing these nonfiction books all about butterflies. We've already gotten started on a couple of pages. I can go more in depth with you later this afternoon. And we actually have caterpillars in the room. We got to see them form their chrysalises over the past few days. Um, we are doing butterfly research. We've been doing text features. Everything's just all integrated and it's been working out really, really nice. I'm also not used to looking over here at this camera, <laughs> sorry. It's, it's just really nice. And then next week we are starting sunflowers. So by the end of this week, this first nonfiction book will be done. This was something that we did together. Um, and then next, week. So each nonfiction book takes two weeks. Um, they'll start working on their sunflower book more independently. I'm going to, or I plan on posting a video about how I teach writing, something I've been trying really hard to share with the internet this year. And I just want to be able to sit down and kind of explain it a little bit more. So if you have questions, I pulled a bunch from Instagram, which by the way, if you're not following me there, that's where I've been posting all of my content that I've been sharing with you guys. And there is a lot of really good stuff. It's just different than sitting down and kind of like hanging out with you and kind of chatting. So what I'm doing right now, I made like a little practice book yesterday, but because we're learning about text features, we've been finding them whole group. I have these like labels we've been using on the board. We've been looking for them online. We've been talking about them. We've been including them in our nonfiction writing. Um, but their goal today is going to be 
to use these tablets that I have over here. If you've been watching for a while, I got those like, I got those when I was teaching kindergarten and I wasn't one-to-one. -one. My students have not used them this year except yesterday to practice doing the activity that I wanted to do today. So we in math are working on composing shapes. I could show you really quickly um, what they were doing yesterday. They just practiced submitting photos of, so like we were composing shapes. So you can see, different shapes and they're doing this just in groups this is a group activity so i have one ipad per each group groups are varied skill levels so there are students who are high medium low in every reading group and they just practiced composing shapes taking photos uploading it to seesaw yesterday it was really just a practice for what i want to do today which is finding non-fiction text features so you'll see how that plays out and then after that as a group they're going to in a way reconstruct a non-fiction book so i just took this book that i have from national geographic and i kind of deconstructed it like this and i'm having them put it back together in a sense and i don't know if this is going to be as amazing as i feel like it could be but it's just one of those things where like you know you're a teacher you get an idea this would be a really cool way for them to show me what they know and that they can use text features because if they can put it back together in a book and make it make sense then clearly they understand it right so they're practicing this as a group today if it goes well and if it's there's that balance there between okay this is a productive struggle i will probably use this as an assessment tomorrow like i'll probably have them do another reconstruction of a non-fiction chapter book um it'll just be different from this one and it did take me time to type up but this is an activity that i can use can't put it on teachers pay teachers because obviously I took text from a National Geographic book. These are all of the pieces. This is the text on each page, photographs to support each page. These are the headings. We have table of contents, glossary. They have to put the table of contents in order. Okay, here is the book. This is actually, I think if this goes well, this is gonna be one of the most fun things that I've just come up with kind of on the spot. So here's the cover. Um, they're gonna have to put the table of contents in order. There's also gonna be no blank pages, like no title page or anything like that. So the first thing is helpful bees. They'll have to put the heading. They'll have to find um, the text that matches it. So it says bees help people and plants. Honey bees make honey and beeswax people use these things. And then we have honeycomb and beeswaxes and candles. They might think for a moment this could be part of the glossary, but it's not giving a definition. So we'll see. And then after helpful bees is pollen power. Pollen power, this is about pollen. This is a photo photo with like a power word and then six cool bee facts this actually goes across two pages so there's one two three four five six so they'll have to go to the next page even though there's no heading here so hopefully they can get that and then the glossary which I've, i had to kind of redo this but the glossary and bonus points if they put it in alphabetical order and the back is just the back i thought that was a really fun way to kind of get them more hands-on creating something and like i said if this goes well i'll use it as an assessment for them tomorrow as long as it's not super super difficult or i might modify it for tomorrow um and that's just how it goes when you try something new good morning happy wednesday things we're gonna move our caterpillars into the butterfly net. habitat. We have a net, what? a net enclosure. It's like a mesh enclosure, not a net. This is where our butterflies are gonna grow. Oh, it's so, so this little flower is where they're gonna drink from. They sip their nectar with their. How? Um, a uh, proboscis. Proboscis. So, Miss Call, once they come out, Miss Call can feed them with this. The log is where our chrysalises are going to rest. I'm gonna take the lid off super carefully. They're in their chrysalises, right? They can't escape. But they're gonna they're gonna feel me and they're gonna feel threatened. You're gonna see how they try to defend themselves. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Ready? Here comes the lid. Sit on your bottom. Okay. Oh, look. See that? They're, they're trying to defend themselves. See how they do it? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very happy with you right now. I'm stressing them out. I don't really want to stress them out. Okay, so I'm going to put it in the log like this. Everyone's going to get a close look. And now we're going to put them safely inside the net. Oh my. All right, there they are. Oh, And Miss Call's gonna throw this ickiness away. Oh, no. This is a little, um, 
A spoon? No, it's called a... Nope, it's a... Leaf dropper. Leaf. So I can feed them like they're still shaking, they're nervous. So this is actually a monarch and that butterfly down there is a painted lady. So we are going to get to see how many days it takes for our chrysalises to become Butterflies. Butterflies. <laughs> Actually, two is shaped. Alright, whisper, ready, begin. And stop. Record your number. Begin. Whisper. If your numbers went up even just a little bit, give me hearts. Let me see. I love it. Your brains are growing. Beautiful job. Okay, we're going to practice making words. Down at the word building, remember, we have to have a beginning, middle, and ending sound. Initial consonant here or an initial blend here. The fox will claw at the bait. Remember we talked about bait yesterday? Yeah. What's bait? Like, what? They eat, like something to catch, like crap. Something to catch things. Capital letter. Good. What's my first word? The. Tall line down. Cross. Letters are sitting on the floor. The. Fingers. Spaces. The what? Fox. Map it. Aww. Hold on, pause. I hear other people talking. Spell will. Good job. L means his twin brother. The fox will claw. Claw. Do you hear a secret in that word claw? Yes. What secret do you hear? Aww. How are you going to spell aww at the end of a word? You got it, first grade. The fox will claw. A. How are we going to spell that long A sound in the middle? A. We're going to use A. I. We're going to use that vowel team. She is laying. Capital letter. She is laying in the fresh straw. Holy moly, first grade. Why'd you put swell? a question mark there? Did you like say swell? She's laying in the first straw? Swell? All right, my turn. turn. Are you ready to help me write the sentence? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do straw. Capital letter? Spell she. A. Good. She. Is. This is a sight word. Spell it. I. Good. She is. Laying. Laying. Take off the ending and you just have? Lay. Good. Spell lay. L-A-Y. Good. What's my ending? I-N-G. Good. She is laying in the fresh. Roller coaster's ready. Fresh. Good. Spell it. Good. She is laying in the fresh straw. What do you hear at the beginning of that word? Straw. S T. S T. Straw. S T R. We have a three-letter blend. Ready? Spell straw. Do actually, can you send in your bottom for me, love? We're gonna do the rhyme and then the whole word. Starting with the tricky one, rhyme. 
Blame. Good word. Blame. Beautiful first grade rhyme. L. Word. Spelling. Good rhyme. A. Word. Snake. Love it. Rhyme. Uh, uh, um, this rhyme? Oh, oh. What are the words? Nailed it. Rhyme. A. Word. A. Rhyme. Oh. Word. Good word. Mine and Pam's okay, boys. Rhyme. Oh, that's upside down. Can you do it upside down? No. Rhyme. Oh. It's just the boys. Oh. Boys, what's the word? Oh. Spoken. Spoken. This one is tricky though. No, it's not. I bet we can. Rhyme. Ah. Word. Okay, fine. I'm gonna do it upside down one. Do it upside down. Upside down? No. Yeah. Can you do it upside down? I don't even know. Yeah. What's yeah. the rhyme? Um. 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 um, 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 um hey. Good. What's the word? Blame. Okay. So let's throw this word to your neighbor. Spider. What's the word? Spider. What's the word? Skillful. Word. Joyful. When you know it, you can give me a thumbs up. Word. Word. That's enough for our magic. We're just going to go ahead and get started with text features. If Mr. H walks in, it'll be okay. What are we learning about? Whisper to your neighbor. What are we learning about? Text features. Text features. Text features. Text features. Text features. Text features help us. Text features we can name. If you have a text feature that you know of in your brain, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Everyone should have a thumb up. You should know at least one. I don't know. Text feature. Heading. Is she correct? Yes. Yes. What's heading used for? Who can tell me? Uh, oh, Mr. H. Oh, lucky. Oh, oh, oh. To understand what page we're on. To understand what the page is uh, about. About. about, right? Okay, give me another example of a text feature. No. Hi, Graham. Is she right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, another one. Glossary, is he right? Yeah. Anyone? Map. Map, is she right? Yeah. Anyone give me one? Special print. Special print. You know what I love that you did just now? You were thinking and you were double checking over here because you know we have them over here. That was a really good idea. It's special print to text feature. Yeah. Okay, what kind of special print can we have? Bold. Bold. Hold on. Underline. Just one more. One more. What is it? Actually, caption. Caption and label. What's the last kind of? Special print, bold, underline, and it's the crooked one. Do you remember? Caption. I label. Tab. I tab. That's that one that almost looks like cursive. Label. Like, label. We are going to practice oh, finding text features together. Oh, okay. Next one, map. Map. Yeah, I like map. Next one, diagram. Diagram. Next one, label. 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 Love it. Next one, heading. Hey, hey. Who wants to come market for us? So we'll see if you guys are thinking of the same one. Uh, there's find two. It. I see two. Is he no. correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, technically, technically that is a heading. To find the glossary, whisper it to your neighbor. Whisper it to your neighbor. Uh, what page? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Thumbs up by your heart if you see some text features. Show me with your fingers how many text features you see. Um, I see With your fingers. Show me with your fingers. I know, I know. What? You see four? All right, ready? Talk about it. I got two. I see how many. I know. 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 Sitting on their bottom. Yeah, there's one on there. Okay, what'd you find? Map. A map. A map. Okay, is he right? Yes. Oh, she's gonna jump for it. What's the? I know it. I know a label. A label. This is a label saying that this is a leatherback sea turtle. So now we know what kind of turtle it is. Telling us about what this is. 
Is it a table of contents, diagram, glossary, caption, or special print? What do you think it could be? Oh, no. Ooh, ooh, it's going to be caption. No, uh-uh. Don't spoil it for her. Let her, let her think. Uh. Is that telling us about a picture? No! I'm asking. Is it telling us about a picture? No. Okay, so I want you to look over here. See if you can find a caption over here. Which of these words are telling us about the picture? Hold on, let her think. Mm -hmm. Seashells tropical world in warm ocean waters. They're one of the few reptiles that live in the sea. Or the dark blue area shows where sea turtles travel. Which one would be a caption? Okay, go ahead and mark it. Could she be right? Yeah. Yeah, she could. Which picture is that telling us about? The, the ocean. Which one? Turtle. Point to it. This one, right? Turtle. Yeah, the sea turtle. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, your goal is to find as many text features in your books as possible. Yeah. Our dragonflies got the most in because they were working together the best. They were Let's sharing together, the most. So your okay, job, okay, if you find a text together. feature, is to mark your text feature. You're going to mark it and then take a picture in Seesaw. Oh. Actually, when I call your group, you're going to pick one book to take to your table. You're going to share the books, but everyone gets to pick one. Sound good? Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Why did you put these two together? Pollen so power. Okay. This is just the last one. I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. What could that be for? Six. Cool Yeah. That's out of my hand. Okay, I'm going to tell you, this one is actually not correct. This one is a word, and it's telling you what it is. Oh, fun fact? Glossary. Glossary. Yeah, that, that one goes in the glossary. It tells you what it is. It is a so what's color. after pollen power? What do you need next? Uh, next, it needs Colby facts. Okay, Colby facts. Over here. I need Colby. Okay, helpful bees. Which of these also goes with helpful bees? You need words and you need a picture. Okay, what's next? Six cool bee facts. That goes here. Oh, we're so close. You're so close. You guys did so well. Oh, yeah. Let's get all three, though. Okay. A sticky yellow object. Okay, so after pollen power, you've got pollen power. Do you have a picture for pollen power? You might have thrown it away by accident. You threw it away by accident, babe. I see how you say that one's A, but it's actually the P word. Not the fundamental alphabet. In alphabetical order. Good job. Need A, B, C, D. Okay, so let's see our pages. That, that, let's see how they go. These have to go there because they're one, two, three. That makes sense to me. Okay. All right, this group you have helpful bees. Okay, so what's the next thing you need? On your table of contents, what's um, next? Pollen power. Okay, get our pollen power on there. Pollen power. First group is done, let me check it. Okay, cover. Table of contents, helpful bees. Pollen power, correct. Six B facts, correct. Glossary, good. Okay, now can you guys number your pages so that it matches your table of contents? Good. So we're looking at these bold words to help us put it in order. You have B for beeswax, and then you have a P and H. H. So which one should go next? Oh, I think H. H. Good. Put your name on the back. Your name should be on the back. Bring me your books. Your challenge was to see if you could use text features to reconstruct a non-fiction book. If you thought that this was easy, you can show me a smile. If you thought it was just right, you can show me a check. If you thought it was hard, you can show me a heart. Most of you were really, really successful. What did you think was the hardest part about this challenge? They're trying to figure out which one was which. Um, Dragonflies, your group was really successful in figuring out which, which went on which page. Can you tell us about how you did that? I love that. 
So she knew which pictures were part of the glossary because she knows that a glossary has the word and it tells what it what it means. So she knew that these pictures were for the glossary. Beautiful job. No, to put bees help people and plants. Honeybees make honey and beeswax. People use these things. How did you know that was part of helpful bees? It was there because it says helpful bees. Right, it all goes together. We can't, when we're writing our nonfiction chapter book, we have to make sure that it makes sense. Does it make sense to talk about pollen on this page? No. no. Does it make sense to talk about beeswax under pollen power? No, it all has to be organized. So this is perfect for today to work in your group. Like if we do this again, what's something you can do if you're feeling frustrated? You can try to be a problem solver. You can try to be kind. Big deep breath, right? Not easy to work together all the time. That's why we're doing it because when you're in second, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, when you're an adult working in your job, you have to work with other people. And sometimes you might feel frustrated. It happens. Grownups feel frustrated all the time. But we can't yell at the people that we're working with. We have to take big deep breaths, calm down, and try again, okay? We have to make sure we're treating the people that we work with really kindly. Okay, beautiful job. Text features help us. The topic they draw to important details, and they give us more information. Okay, for text features tomorrow, 42, heading. This one is the life cycle. Life cycle, but what type of text feature is it called? Diagram. It's okay. It's going to fold it up. Caption telling us about the photo. Our next category is camouflage, their scales, or we can do fun facts. If you want to write about Watch Out Next, if you think that makes the most sense, raise your hand. Okay, let's do it. Why are you guys wanting fun facts to be at the end of the book? Because All of those are great reasons. So the next chapter we're going to be writing is Watch Out. Okay, normally when we come in from recess, we do what? Math. Math. But we're going to do what? Writing. We're going to do writing instead. After um, we work on this chapter, we get to do shape. We'll do that later. After no. we work, listen with your ears. After we do our chapter, we are going to do rocket math and then beautiful e math. Okay. And after specials, we'll do our shapes test. Okay. Yes. Put in here. We wanted to talk about their colors, so things that they looked like. We wanted to talk about camouflage. Um, how they mimic, and we want to talk about that their wings have scales. And that, and that they, and that some of them are poisonous. Yeah, yeah, because they mimic poisonous butterflies so that the predators think they're not poisonous. So let's talk about what our opening sentence say. If we are going to talk about what butterflies look like, what could our opening sentence be? Watch out, butterfly. Watch out, butterfly. Ooh, we could have like a hook. It's time to hide. Yeah, it's time to hide because butterflies use camouflage. That's a good one. What else can we say? Okay, I'm going to pick my opening sentence. I think I love just saying, watch out, butterfly. You can write your opening sentence. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, so we said we were going to talk about details that they are different colors, camouflage, mimic, and scales. What could our first sentence be about? What do we know that we need to include? Color. Why would we talk about color first? It's because so, it's because so we can learn about um, more about their, about their color. Yeah, okay, what else? Yeah, some butterflies have different colors. Because that some butterflies I think we should talk about the scales first, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's think of a, of a sentence that tells us about butterflies, wings, having scales, and having different colors. Can you think of one? Who's got a really juicy sentence? Do you know that the butterflies have scales on their wings? That sounds great. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, did you know butterflies have scales on their wings? Should I put a period, an exclamation mark, or a question mark? Question mark. All right, let's do it. Did you know? Thomas call goes all the way to the edge. Butterflies. Brainstorm together. What can I talk about next in my next sentence? What can I say? What can I say about? 
If you have a different way to say it, you can say it your way. Then I'm going to talk about camouflage. I want you to write your own sentence about butterflies using camouflage. So this time I eat was not on the floor, so I, so I tried, did the E again. Tall said they use camouflage to hide from predators. And then I said some butterflies mimic poisonous butterflies. And do I mimic? Yeah. Why? Because it's important. People might not know. Okay, I should underline mimic. What else should I underline? In this space right here, what's something I could add to help my readers understand this more? She said we could have a closer look at the scales and the colors. Would that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What else could we put? Yeah, a butterfly hiding in trees or leaves. We could do that. We could show camouflage. You could do a zoomed in picture. You could do something different. You could do camouflage. I want you to make an illustration and I want you to include labels and a caption. Can you do that? Yeah, I decided to draw my butterfly wing and then I did like a little zoom in bubble so they can see close. I only do like the wing, not the body. That's a good idea. So I, my caption says, look close. A butterfly's wings have tiny scales. I labeled my scales and I labeled the wing. I have very clearly and nicely labeled it and written a caption. Make sure you color it really, really nicely too. You put in all that hard work, you can color. That way my reader knows there's different kinds of butterflies. What's up, baby love? Can I see? Where's your caption? No, caption like this. Or, or it might not be poisonous, but it might be trying to trick predators into thinking yeah. it's poisonous. The butterfly that is like pretending to be a monarch butterfly, mm -hmm. but it's not actually a monarch butterfly to trick because what if? Do you know what that one's called? What the name of it is? It's a viceroy. Viceroy mm -hmm. is is like, bigger than the. Than oh, it the, is. I yes, don't. it is. You read about that? Yes. Oh, I can't wait to. Can you put that in your book so I know? And a caption. Nice job, really. Love this caption. That's a good one, babe. Love it. Chop it. Do you add your material labels? Predators. More colors. And then? Oh, okay, perfect. Yes. Two boxes. You get 20 nuggets? Yeah. This color. Which set can make this shape? Okay, this is our picture. Here. Wow. Look how cute. Oh my gosh! You guys look so amazing. I look like I'm going to an interview. Yeah. All right. It is the end of the day. Oops, you probably got a little bit dizzy there. Um, today was really fun. I'll talk mostly about my observation and the activities that we did, just to kind of reflect because it's not something that I've done before. But you know, every year you try to make things a little bit better. So we were doing text features, which is is a really you know, it's a hard concept for kids and they're going to be doing text features for the rest of their school careers. And I even told them um, yesterday, I was like, you're going to use text features in second grade, third grade, fourth grade, all of elementary school, all of middle school, all of high school, in your adult life, you're going to use these all the time. Um, and I didn't record a lot because it was just hard and, you know, you have to be like very all over the place with it. So um, every kid was going on a little text feature hunt. So this is just their personal checklist just to give them something, almost just something to do while they didn't have the iPad. And so they could be, you know, accountable for their own learning just a little bit like, okay, can I find this, this, this? I did have like two kids who just checked things, even though I knew they didn't find it. So I would go up to them and I would say, oh, can you show me where the map is in your nonfiction book? And they couldn't find it. I'm like, okay, well, let's erase that. And let's see if we can find a map in another friend's book. This is more of like, a self-accountability, something to keep them going while they were waiting to upload 
their the text feature that they found on Seesaw. As they were taking pictures and uploading them, I would periodically stop, review them. We would talk about them. I would say like, oh, like I haven't seen any diagrams. Let's find a diagram or I haven't seen any captions. Let's find a caption. And then if there's a student who uploaded something and it was incorrect, we talked about it. I had everybody find it again. So going over it, I created these little books. I had them put their names on the back so I could know which group was whose. This was definitely hard, but I always prefer things to be a little bit more challenging versus way too easy. Um, because our groups that I made today, they were diverse. So there were medium, high and low learners in there. They had to do a lot of, oops, I just, that one just fell off. <laughs> they had to do a lot of work um, for this. Like this page was a little more challenging. I think if I did it again, probably for the first time, I would just include this information together and they would just do the headings and then the content on the page, kind of like how the six cool facts are, the heading and the content on the page, which this one actually had to go to this page and the next page. Um, and some of them got it right away. They were like, let's just put it on the next page. And they saw on the table of contents that it would be on page five. And they were talking about, oh, why doesn't it have a page four? Because this one's longer. Like they were saying all these amazing things that showed me how well they understood it. Um, and the glossary, even doing the pictures, they were like, wait, we have to put it in alphabetical order. So I could see like which kids were really understanding. Um, and the kids that were in the group who weren't understanding as much, they got to practice more. So that's good. And so this activity, I would do it again, but I would probably simplify just like heading and then page content a little bit more. This was really challenging. And then what else? Okay, so talked, reviewed text features, gave them tasks for text features, came back. We closed by talking about text features again. It was a really fun time to be observed. Um, my principal always asks kids, okay, what are you learning about? And some of them said bees, some of them said butterflies. And it kind of took them a while to say like text features, but I know they are learning it because they're using the text features and they're applying them and we're also using them in our writing and we'll take a test on them so it's hard sometimes for kids to say we today we are learning about text features because we're learning about so many things within that if you came in when we were doing shapes like they could say we're learning about shapes because that's very simple but with text features there's it's there's a lot going on so every you know five minutes i could say what are we learning about text features but i don't know I don't know. Let me know how you guys approach that in your classroom because I'm sure your admin does the same thing where they walk around and ask it. And I said it probably 17 times during the lesson, text features. What are we learning about text features? Bring it back, close it. What did we learn about text features? But I don't know. That's just, even said it was a little bit nitpicky, but that's okay. We normally do math after lunch, but since we were just taking a test, I decided to use that short block of time that we normally do for writing for our math test. And we spent more time on writing after lunch. It has been really, really fun to write these nonfiction chapter books with my kids is another student's example so there's their cover and I actually like to work on the cover first because if they finish something it's like an easy finisher or if they're being really particular about it they can spend longer and work on it so I like doing the cover first for these nonfiction books we haven't done our table of contents yet because um, some of them needed extra room on the back to write their words sorry extra room here to write their words so this would be page one and this would be page two so we're not gonna do our table of contents till the end. So we did headings for all of them. Most of this is shared writing. I did let them decide if they wanted to say it a different way or have a different opening or a different detail or a different closing. Um, and the kids who want to are taking more freedom with that, which is great. But if not, we're just doing this together. And then this is the one we did today. Yeah, so he decided to do three different pictures. Um, whereas I just decided to just do one picture and kind of zoom it in, so. Awesome with that. So that's taking us about two weeks. This is the last week that we're doing it. And I think that's everything. Math was just a shapes test, so that's not interesting at all. Definitely having a really great time. I miss talking to you guys. Um, tomorrow is gonna be an egg hunt, so I have a bunch of eggs in my classroom. We're gonna do that at the end of the day because we don't have school on Friday and Easter's coming up. All the fun things. I feel like I wanted to tell you so much and I can't remember any of it now. Oh, also I am remembering I, I did have a little girl uh, decide to chop her hair in the middle of my observation, so. That's six-year-olds. I do have an appointment that I get to run off to. I have been running out after school pretty much right after the kids leave. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you are someone who's been with me and the channel for a long time, let me know. Say hi in the comments. And if you are new, make sure you introduce yourself below. Thanks so much for hanging out. Let me know if you want to see more Day in the Lives, if you really miss the Week in the Lives, or if there's some standalone videos that you are looking forward to. And just a reminder, if you have any writing questions, leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for, how do I exit these? What do I usually? Oh. 
Like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe and join the family down below, and I will see you in the next one.